well, our insurance business gives us a float that's other people's money which we're temporarily holding but which gets regenerated all the time so it's a practical matter it has a very very long life and it's probably a little more likely to grow than shrink so we have 124 billion dollars that people have given us and and that's somewhat like having a bank that just consists of one guy and people come in and deposit 124 billion and promise not to withdraw it forever um, and we've got a very good insurance business it's taken a very long time to develop it very long time uh, in fact I think we probably have the best property casualty operation all things considered Today we're going to be looking at what could arguably be one of the best investments Berkshire has ever made and that's within the insurance industry. They've owned a number of different insurance companies over the years and currently still do. Now one of the big reasons that this has been so pivotal for Berkshire Hathaway is the ability to invest the float. Now just in case you're unaware, insurance companies, they take in everybody's premiums like me and you, we insure our car, our house, our cell, our income or whatever it may be that we're getting insurance on. Insurance company takes those premiums and generally that insurance company will have a big pool of money so that's everyone's premiums they're collecting and then if there's an accident or whatever and they have to pay out then they'll pull some money from that pool um, and pay out that claim. Now generally most insurance companies with this big pool of money they'll put this into fixed interest or long term bonds, relatively pretty safe investments. Now in the case of Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger they have this big pool of money so everyone's premium sitting there which they can invest in a number of different businesses which they've done over the years which has dramatically increased the returns for Berkshire Hathaway having this ability essentially it's free money sitting there they're not paying interest on this money or anything but they will have to obviously pay out insurance claims that come through uh, Berkshire is really the ideal form for writing the business because we have this massive amount of assets that are in many cases are largely uncorrelated with natural disasters and we can we don't need to buy reinsurance from anybody else and we can use that we can use the money in a more efficient way than most insurance companies it's not a, it's really not a good business if you keep your for as a standalone insurer if you keep enough capital to really be sure you can pay anything that comes along under any kind of conditions and Berkshire can do that and it can use the money in ways it likes to use. So it's a very valuable asset. I don't so generally most insurance companies don't have a huge amount of capital sitting on the books. Obviously they have their float which they put into bonds and fixed interest and such. Um, but generally they don't have a large amount of cash there. Um, so what they do is they take out reinsurance policies. And this is to cover the costs in case they get some big claims coming in that they can't afford to pay out. And now this is what Warren Buffett does as well as he has a reinsurance component of the business where he can insure insurance companies essentially um, is what it boils down to. Now we've seen many cases over the years where insurance companies have gone bust even in New Zealand um, we, when we had the earthquakes down Christchurch there are a number of insurance companies that went bust um, and I think even reinsurance companies went bust through this as well. So this is where Warren Buffett has quite a strong advantage in this area as he has quite a large amount of cash sitting there which could pretty comfortably pay out any disaster. Now the big issue that there may be um, which Buffett is referred to in a number of different interviews over the years is he never knows what's around the corner um, there could be some natural disasters you know there could be hurricanes earthquakes bushfires whatever it could be um, and, and one might happen one week and you might be followed by another one the next week so he likes to have a large buffer of cash there available to pay out to these insurance companies um, if they need to. It's pretty much what you'd expect it's it's such an easy business taking in money now in cash and just keeping the books and giving a little of it back. There's a lot of stupidity gets into it. And if you're not way better than the average at it, you're going to lose money in the end. It's a mediocre business for most people. Started out with and it's good at Berkshire only because we're a lot better at it. If we ever stop being a lot better at it, it wouldn't be safe for us either. And the Jeep Jane. We've got a great insurance, a really great insurance operation right here in Omaha, about two miles from here. And it was bought by us in 1967 and, and, and it changed, you know, it changed Berkshire. We built on that base. So we've got a, we've really got a great insurance business and uh, I won't give you a number, but it's, it's probably a bigger number than you've got in your, <laughs> in your head for 
and it's worth more within Berkshire than it would be worth as an independent operation. Somebody can say, well, this little gem, if it was put out there, would sell at a higher multiple or something of the sort. It, it works much better uh, as being part of a whole where we have had two tiny operations, two in, tiny insurance operations many, many years ago, and they, be, they both went broke. They were never, the underwriting was bad. But we paid all the claims. We did not walk away. We paid every dime of claims. And uh, nobody worries about doing any kind of financial transaction with Berkshire. And, uh, you know, that today, on Saturday, about 9 in the morning, we got a, I got a phone call. And, and people, we made a deal the next day committing Berkshire to pay out $10 billion. Uh, come hell or high water, no outs for, you know, uh, material adverse change or anything like that. And people know we'll be there with 10 billion and they know in the insurance business, when we write a policy that may can't come be payable during the worst catastrophe in history or may be payable 50 years from now, they know Berkshire will pay. And that's why we've got $124 billion afloat. This is also another reason why Berkshire Hathaway hangs on to a lot of cash. Um, they get a lot of criticism over the time. You know, you're sitting on 150 billion, why aren't you putting that back into the markets? Um, and, you know, he's, Buffett's mentioned from time to time that he needs this capital in case there is big disasters, especially natural disasters, um, that he may have to pay out some of these reinsurance claims or something along those lines. So you can sort of say maybe half of that cash is allocated towards the insurance industry. He is obviously sitting on a big pile of cash as well, but a lot of that sort of can't be used up because for the insurance part of the business, which makes Berkshire quite unique in that regard. Um, and like you also mentioned there at the end of the video, um, he thinks that the insurance part of the business wouldn't be as good if it was taken outside of Berkshire. Do you think Berkshire Hathaway would be the behemoth they are today without having the insurance part of the business? I think it's been quite a key part within Berkshire's history, having that ability to invest the float. Now for most people, you know, that's neither here nor there, but when you put someone like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, these great capital allocators at the helm and have that ability to invest the float, definitely a huge advantage I feel. And it's been quite a big part of the Berkshire Hathaway history. And I don't think they'd be the company they are today. But I'd love to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts on it? Drop in the comments below. That's going to pretty much wrap us up for today. Stay safe and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers, guys.